Hey, this is Rob Ansbach, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 307, and my next guest makes online marketing fun again. Yeah, amazing. You know, for me, I have this love-hate relationship with Facebook. I, I love posting, but my ads always suck. <laughs> so if that's you, my next guest is going to help you figure this all out. So I want to welcome Laurel Portier and, and just thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, just to kind of like make a little note about what you just said, you know, um, I always tell my students there's no difference between content and ads. It's all the same to me, right? Like any type of content that I'm putting out, I'm going to throw some money on it because uh, honestly, ads are just content with money on it right? That's it. That's all, that's all ads are. And so like, I, you know, how you were saying, you know, like I want to make, you know, online ads fun again. And you know, that couldn't be more true because that's what I always tell my students. If you're not having fun putting out content, then, then what are you doing? Right? right. You got, you got to fall, you got to fall in love with, with doing that. And, and, you know, the, one of the reasons I, I have you here is because you've become an expert. You, you know, a lot of the people that I know and a lot of the people that that I've trained early on have gone to you for ads, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm honored to have you on the show, you know, but what I'm seeing lately is people saying, Hey, I'll just put your ads up there. And then they don't run demographics. They don't run any of this other stuff. And then you look at what they're doing. I'm like, what the hell? All these comments are from people that don't even match what you're trying to sell. Oh yeah. Per oh, 100%. You know, like I, um, I, I get this with students all the time because they get so many people get like so obsessed with like the details, like the targeting and all of these things. And at the end of the day, none of that matters. Right. And, you know, the if you do one thing when you're putting out ads or content, I'll keep saying ads and content because to me, they're the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. If every time you put out an ad and it is just solving one person's problem. That's all you have to do. But so many people don't know how to do that. You know, I just did a video last week because this is a reoccurring thing is when people start to work with me, the first question I ask them is, what problem do you solve? And they always want to answer the question, well, I help so-and-so. And I'm like, eh -eh, you're already answering the question incorrectly because if you say I help so-and-so, then you're already doing that wrong because it's all about you and not about them. Right. right? And so I, I always like to, you know, and, and it's not to poo poo the whole value proposition because I do think that a value proposition statement is super important, but a lot of business coaches and consultants who teach people how to do that, that, that value proposition, they forget to take those people three steps back and say, okay, it's fine that you do this, but what problems are you solving to do this? And so, so many people, like, I'll ask them, what problem do you solve? And they're like, I help so-and-so. And I'm like, but what problem do you solve? And they can't answer that question, Rob. Like, what the heck is going on with the, with people who are, like, helping all these people but don't know what problems they solve? You know, right? What, what That's Joe literally Polish, the key. <laughs> what Joe Polish likes to say all the time, and I think his book is titled that, what's in it for them? 100%. What is in it for them? It's like, not what's in it for you, like not what you want to do. Like, it's like, what do people need help yeah. with? And, and if people just understand that one thing, your content and ads will just all work itself out, no yeah, matter I, what buttons you push, no matter I, what buttons you push. I, I find lately, though, I'm battling their ego. You know, this is what I want to do. Yeah, but that's not mm. what the client's going to respond to. And, and they, or they want to use their industry standard keywords, which nobody uses, but them. And then they wonder why their customers aren't responding. Yeah. You know, one of the things I learned from Nick Peterson, who I, who's been mentoring me for gosh, the past four years, it goes in this order, frequency, intensity, purpose. And so many people try to do the purpose first. And I'll, I'll give the audience like an, a direct example of that, right? Whenever I first started um, a little bit about me, I worked in television. I started in 2002. I was the, the 
the the heart I think in my opinion the hardest job in television getting people to watch the 11 p.m. news right that is I I was 2002 I was a sophomore in college it was my they were like you're the young gun you're gonna you're gonna do that job and honestly that's the most important job so I (laughs) but no one wanted it right and so I had to get really really good at doing that one thing was grabbing people's attention you know and so it, it it's just one of those things where you have to learn very early on that you ha- if you can't do one of two things, grab people's attention and give them something of value to hang on to, you're already you're already dead in the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's and and everybody screams, you know, because we all have these iPhones or or maybe you have a Samsung phone and and they're all complaining. Oh well, you know, iOS took away our ability to do this. To, Stop blaming the phones, you know, start blaming your own ad because it probably sucked to begin with. Oh, 100, 100%, 100%. Yeah. So how do you improve the ad? So how, you know, if if someone came to you Mm -hmm. and, and, and they wanted your service, what's the process? Yeah. So if someone wants my process, that's honestly the very first question I'm asking is what problem do you solve and how many people have you solved it for? Because one of the things that I say is very triggering to some students and they get a little, you know, eh, um, they they think that I am making fun of them for because they'll be like, well, I don't have results. And I'm like, well, then you can't say that. <laughs> we laugh, but I, it's it's a very triggering thing for, you know, for people to hear. But it's the truth. It's like, you know, and, and people talk about imposter syndrome and one of the one of the ways that I've been able to overcome because we all have imposter syndrome at some you know at, at some point we it, I don't think it ever goes away you know I was even um, at an event where Jay Abraham was talking about that he's like imposter syndrome it never goes away but one of the one of the ways that I have found and this is something that has helped me in my career over and over and over again is like just take one step back it's like okay if I can't solve that person's all of their problems, but I can help them solve this little thing. That's enough. I mm-hmm. think sometimes people over promise or they over guarantee because they're trying to make themselves look good. When in reality, the big wins are actually in solving the smaller problems. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And when I first started, you know, in, in the coaching field, um, I, I would over promise because that's what everybody did. And I, it was getting to the point where it was like, you know, but all the clients that I'm getting are crap. They, you know, they, they're like the worst clients. And so I, I started telling people, you know, that the, 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 the cheaper the client, the more hassles involved. And so when I started raising my prices, I got better clients. I started asking better questions and, and I, I wouldn't get all the pushback. And, and I, I think that's hard for a lot of coaches and consultants because they want to take on anybody that breathes as a client, and that's not right. And and you know when I ask them, when they say, "Well, I, Rob, I have bills to pay," well, so do I. But I'm not going to be desperate and take on people that don't fit the parameter or the avatar that I have, you know, set aside. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it all goes back to what I was saying a while ago, right? I and I and I actually like I I left the audience hanging. I was like, here's an example. I worked in television, right? And then I kind of lost my train of thought because sometimes I tend to do that. Like it all goes back to frequency, intensity, purpose, right? So I worked in television a super long time. In 2018, I started my business. And I thought that my purpose was to cut out the middleman because in television, I, I did commercials for, you know, primetime television. I did it for news programs. I did it for local brick and mortar car commercials, attorneys. I mean, I I worked in television almost 20 years. I just aged myself, right? Almost 20 years of working in television. And so whenever I had the, you know, the idea that I was going to do ads for businesses, I really wanted to work with local brick and mortar. That was what I thought my purpose was, right? Mm -hmm. But if we go back to frequency, intensity, purpose, you have to start with frequency because to your point, you don't know who you can help. Mm -hmm. So in the very beginning, I was going live every single day 
And I was teaching these simple $5 ads that I had been doing to launch all of these TV shows and the, the ads that we were doing to launch all of these commercials for all of these clients that we had at, at the TV station, right? And so I, w- I, I took on a couple of brick and mortar clients and I'm like, I would never work with those, those bro marketers, those like, I I didn't even know what online coaching was. Honestly, I thought it was a big scam because the, it was just very scammy. And the more I kept putting out content, people kept asking me. And and again, it goes back to, remember how a while ago I said that small problem, all I knew how to do was create a badass video spot and throw $5 on it into the ads manager. That's all I knew how to do. And so that's what I taught every single day, this $5 ad tactic, right? A video, a $5 video. I didn't know what a webinar was. I didn't know what anything, I didn't know what a sales funnel was. I was just like, I'm going to go online and I'm going to teach these small business owners how to launch these video ads because they're spending thousands of dollars on a TV commercial for thousands of dollars. They can get a whole bunch of $5 ads out there and get more business, right? Than a TV commercial. And so that's what I taught. But as the frequency was going out, the intensity started kicking in where my personality started showing through and I started kind of finding my, finding my groove. That's intensity. But what also happened was I had all of these people in the online space reaching out and saying, Hey, will that work for a webinar ad? And I'm like, I don't know what the heck's a webinar. So I'm Googling what a webinar is. And I was like, Hey, do you want to hop on zoom and allow me to record this? And I'll help you write the ad and everything and we'll test it and we'll see what happens. And again, that's where the frequency, right? Frequency, intensity, purpose. And then after about a year, the purpose was, ah, there's a whole bunch of people in the online marketing space that are being told that they need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on ads. And I'm able to help people go from having a full-time job to being able to quit utilizing a budget that they could actually afford and without all these fancy funnels. And so through my frequency, through the intensity, I found my purpose. And again, a lot of people try to find their purpose way too soon. And that's why they get stuck because they haven't gone through the entire process and they don't know the pathway to finding that purpose. You know, and, and you threw out a, a couple of key words there that, you know, people threw their money away. And, and I, I've, I've noticed, you know, I work with a lot of lawyers and doctors and they tend to just give Google and I, I'm pointing fingers at Google primarily because most of the lawyers and doctors don't advertise on Facebook. They should, mm-hmm. um, but they just waste their money. They just let Google take it and they're spending 10, 20, 30,000 hours a month on ads and probably most of it is wasted. Oh, 100%. Like. I have a chiropractor. I love working with chiropractors, gym owners. I have a chiropractor who's in my program and she's in her seventies. Her and her wife own a chiropractic clinic in San Angelo, Texas. And they literally, um, their angle is they use tools instead of back cracking. Right. And when she told me that I was like, we need to go with that angle because I was like, I'm one of those people that will avoid going to the chiropractor because I hate being cracked. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And I helped her script this, you know, $5 ad uh, about crackophobia. And guess what? Every single day, someone walks into her chiropractic clinic and guess what? The Facebook ads manager doesn't measure that. Right. But every single day she has at least one or two people. She'll, she'll message me on Voxer and she'll be like, Hey, happened again this week. We got eight new patients, like, like clockwork. Like, and and there it goes just from a $5 a day ad. It goes back to solving that one problem, you know, and I don't want to congratulate you because, you know, I I looked at everything that you're doing and you basically focus on one thing, that's Mm -hmm. getting people better ad results. And then you look at all these other coaches that are doing this and that and everything else. And it's like, yeah, but you can't be a master of everything. You know, you're you're just a jack of all trades. And and so you've become that master at doing one thing, very good, teaching it to others, and allowing them, you know, to learn from that one thing. And, and you know, I, 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 I like that, acknowledge, uh, that analogy, that one thing, because in 2012, I won an award to call that one thing. It was one ad piece that I had that made my business and others all the money, you know, in a short amount of time. And, and I, I think most entrepreneurs forget about that. You know, you're good at one thing. Maximize and it's all it takes. 
Yeah. All it takes is one thing, right? I mean, like I'm even... very sarcastic. So I wrote a whole bunch of sarcastic <laughs> books, you know, and people are like, well, Rob, you're Mr. Sarcasm. And, and they're reading my books, laughing, and they want me to write their books now. They want me to help them do other stuff. But it was just that one thing that I forgot about for a long time. I thought, well, I, I should write about it. Oh, yeah. Too many people, I think, because they're just trying to keep up with everyone. And honestly, you know, and, and it all goes back to all these people over promising so many things. And I'm like, most of the people who have money don't want to pay to solve five different things. They want to pay a lot of money to solve one very small problem. Right. Yeah. And, and solving it very well. One of the ads that, that I reflect back on you know, going back to 2012, 2013, 2014, is I would help people rank better with their SEO. Rank on, on, on page one. Nobody cares. Nobody honestly cares because if, if I can get that ad delivered to you, to that one person that I want to target, that's all that matters. doesn't matter if it's on page one. doesn't matter if it's on page 15. If I can get that ad to you, <laughs> that's... I'm probably on page like 200 or something. I don't even I, know. You know, I, I tell people all the time, they're, they're like, but Rob, where are you ranking? doesn't matter. You contacted me, didn't you? <laughs> so it's, it's, I think we have to target our ads to the people that directly need our service and forget about all the other mumbo jumbo crap. Yep. 100%. There's, you know, and I'll, I'll be the first to say I'm not the best at pushing buttons. Um, I, I always just have the, the philosophy that, you know, if you put the right ad in front of the right person, it doesn't matter whether it's a conversion ad, a video ad, a like it does not matter because it's not like, you know, I always look at television. I've never had a car dealership storm into my cubicle, right? My edit bay, because I didn't have an office and say, I demand to know what commercial led me to get three car sales this week or are you using what 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 are you what button are you pushing to launch my commercial on tv right it doesn't, it doesn't matter it showed up on tv and people saw it and they went and bought it and so like i kind of like and i think i think that's what's kind of um helped me understand the online space a little bit is because i had the foundations of how advertising actually works where i think a lot of people who are online they have this very techie version of how advertising is supposed to work. And right. I think that's what trips most people up is they oh. think that the key is like in the button or the optimize it, like, or, or on mm -hmm. these little things when it's like, no, you just got to put the right piece of content in front of the right person. But wasn't there a learning curve? Cause you went from commercial ads, commercial advertising to now, you know, selling yourself this personalized service to help your clients get online. So there was a, a, a bit of a, a difference between advertising and marketing um, you know, from commercial to personalized service. Nope, not no. at all. Wow. Not at all, like walked right into it because I, because it, like think about this, right? Going back to, it was my job to get people to watch the 11 o'clock news. That's the signature framework that I'm known for for my video ads. <laughs> Headline, promise of value, right? That's the that's the thing. So I'll, I'll tell you a little story. So whenever I worked at CBS in Dallas, we were like dead last. We're talking number four. CBS for CBS to be dead last under Fox is like that doesn't happen, right? We we're we were behind, and I had this idea. I was like, and we had the ten o'clock news in in Dallas. I had this idea. What if we told Old people during ratings that they would find out the answer to this in the first 10 minutes of the newscast instead of just saying next at 10 blah 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 and people not knowing how long they had to watch the newscast but I was like in the first 10 minutes you're going to find out these three things that you need to know for tomorrow what do you think happened mm -hmm. they stuck around they stuck around because they knew it only in in only 10 minutes. I'm okay. Uh, it's worth sticking around for 10 minutes after CSI rolled. Right. Mm -hmm. And I brought that formula into like, what's actually in my book, right? Super duper profitable ads. That's the super duper profitable ads. The power, I call it a power content framework, headline promise of value. It's the same. Like I literally just took everything that I was doing in television, replicated it on social media 
And it worked. Why did it work? Because I understand the basics of advertising and marketing. And I've been doing it a really long time, right? Like since 2002. Funny story, I actually flunked my advertising class in college. I didn't think I needed advertising. I was like, this is bullshit. This is hard. I was like, I don't understand all of these campaigns and everything. I thought I was going to be, you know, I wanted to to be behind behind the scenes and, and, you know, produce all these commercials and stuff. I was like, why do I need to learn advertising? Because I even back then didn't get the connection between advertising and, you know, television production and all of that fun stuff. And so I didn't take it, I didn't take it seriously. And um, I took it my senior year. And luckily, it was one of those pass fail situations where I used my pass fail for that class. And the the teacher's like, I'm not going to fail you for this one. Like it's your senior year. Right. So I, but, but I technically failed the class. <laughs> so when did your book come out? Let's talk about that. Um, it came out in November and it is still at the top of the charts in uh, Amazon. It's still right. a bestseller. You know, and I didn't do any, and I didn't do any of the things to launch my book that everyone says that you need to do. I have not even gone beyond, at least I don't think my warm audience. I just built an audience over the last six years and everyone bought my book. And so it's keeping it on the, on the top, on top of the bestsellers list. Yeah. I mean, I've produced 44 books in 11 years and, and I think only the first book I did all the stuff that everybody tells you to do (laughs) after that, I'm like, I'm just doing it on my own my way and, and it worked and. And, and my clients love it and, and you know, I produce their stuff. And, you know, I, again, what goes back to the uniqueness of ourselves, our personality is our brand. And, 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 you know, I've watched you rise over the last few years, you know, you're, 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 you're dealing with Nick Peterson, you know, Joe Polish, you Brandon Straza, you know, all these people that I know, it took me years to develop those relationships. And you're just like, you're a comic on <laughs> <laughs> like, I, wow. feel, I feel I think a lot of people see it that way but my business has turned six years old this year you know so it's been it's been, been a, a couple years yeah you know I I uh but you know you're doing all the right things and 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 I want to congratulate you because you, you're you're impressed and I can't say you're impressing the right people you're impressing upon them the knowledge that you gained, that you transitioned from the TV over to, you know, self-employment. And it takes, I think it takes a lot of guts and courage. Well, thank you. Um, I think not, I don't think, I know. The reason that I have been so like, say successful um, is because I've had a lot of good people in my corner, right? Nick Peterson, Dr. Jeff Spencer, like so many great people who taught me a couple of a couple of principles that are absolutely true simple scales like honestly like i have kept my business so simple like i i i put out content and i have conversations with people that has been my strategy for the last 6 years content conversations content conversations and learning how to practice restraint <laughs> has been the hardest thing to to practice because right. honestly there's a lot of people in my inbox all the time that are like you know I want to do this and I want to do like so many opportunities and I just like saying no is one of the hardest things that is out there but it's the most important things because you see a lot of people blow themselves up because they get bored and they're like oh this is a new shiny thing I can do and it's just you have to get good at doing the mundane yeah yeah and, and yeah, that's it's the really easy it's, that's it's, e- it's telling, simple. <laughs> I've been telling everybody for many, many years, just keep it simple. And the, the more simple you have your operation, the better, because if you go on vacation and you need to have someone step in to cover you, it's so simple they can run it. And if you make yep. it complicated, your 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 employees are going to have fits. You're going to get calls every five minutes when you're on vacation. You're not going to enjoy it. So keep it simple. Yeah. We don't even have employees. Like I didn't even go, I didn't even go beyond that. Like, cause I, that was one of the first things I told, I, whenever I first started working with Nick, I was like, this is what I want, what I want to build, but I want to build it without having employees. My wife and I run the entire, the entire operation. She worked, you know, human resources for Delta airlines. And so she was the perfect person to put in the operations position. Right. And so we both were able to quit our jobs at the same time. 
And, you know, I always like Dr. Jeff says, Laurel, Laurel, you're the one that fucks everything up and your wife is the one that fix, fixes everything and organizes it all. And I'm like, you couldn't have pegged us better. <laughs> well, and, and I think that every entrepreneur needs to have someone that's in their corner to help them balance everything. And, um, you know, without that, we do, we, we, we screw up. I mean, every entrepreneur that I know is very high on the ADHD scale. I mean, <laughs> everything distracts us or we feel like, you know, we, we just have to do everything. And, and um, you know, when you have that keep it simple mentality, it does help us, you know, uh, focus better. You know, but I, I've come to the real, realization over the last few years that I want to work less. I want to make more. And um, the times I am working, I hyper focus, I get shit done. But I only want to be in front of the computer four hours a day. Max, that's it. Yep. And I have surrounded myself, like people walk into my office that I have that I have right now. So I have a huge, I have a big warehouse because this actually used to be my grandparents' five and dime store. Nice. And I surrounded myself and this is Nick you know, nicking them at work. I have my guitar and my amp over there. I've got a full scale basketball goal and foul shot line right in front of me. Why do I have that in my office? Because when I'm not doing the things that absolutely need to get done, I am playing basketball. I am playing my guitar. You know, I'm, you know, riding my bicycle. These are the things that keep me from drifting and going build something that I don't need to build. Yeah. But let's, let's, Talk about, you know, your expanded business because, you know, off air, we were talking about uh, New Orleans and it's one of my mm -hmm. favorite destinations. And and on your website, you talk about taking uh, or having events there, mm -hmm. which yep. I think is incredible. You know, was there something that motivated you to do that or you just out of a whim or? So here's, here's how that actually happened. I don't know if you know Rick Sheffron. He's like an OG and the internet marketing space, him and I have become really good friends. I've been on his, you know, show a couple of times, steal our winners. And he's someone that I really talk to a lot because he always has really great advice for me. And we were talking one day and we had just bought the new Orleans place. And he knew we had a place in Biloxi as well. And he said, Laurel, he's like, um, you ever invite your students to your house? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I was like, I have VIP days here. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, do you just ever invite your students to your house? And I'm like, no. He's like, you just bought the place in New Orleans. He's like, you have a beautiful place in Biloxi on the beach. He's like, that would be something good to add to your Lean on Laurel program, which is my higher tier. I just have two programs, $7 a month and my Lean on Laurel, right? That's it. And um, again, keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. And, and so we just decided to include lounge events because I had attended a Steve Sims event, a speakeasy. Yeah. And I was like, man, the, I really freaking, I was like, I really love this freaking like format. And so Steve and I, uh, I attended my first event last October and I said, Steve, I said, um, I kind of want to like rip this off. I was like, but I kind of want to do it a little bit different. And he's like, rip it off. He's like, this is, this is a great format. And I was like, I'm going to do something crazy. I said, I, I think I'm just going to do it as a, I'm going to invite my, my, my current students to my house to hang out, not charge them or anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's the events that we have at my houses there there. If you're in the program, you're invited. There's no like fancy anything. It's, we have them once a quarter, we call them Laurel lounge events. And we literally lounge around, we drink whiskey. Um, we drink wine. We talk about stuff. We, I help people. I'll follow them around and shoot their content for them. Some people like me to direct their ads and stuff. And we just, we just kind of have fun. And that's the kind of, you know, events that we do at my houses. Well, I can, I can see that becoming a book. <laughs> you know, in Laurel lounges and, and <laughs> conversations that happen there. It's like a fly on the wall and becomes a book. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. I, but I work with a lot of amazing students who have just, awesome stories and it's just it's just really fun it's just so, fun I, I love engaging with my audience my my wife and i were there uh, in in uh 2019 for our 30th anniversary and while we were there we booked a a uh a bike group you know you you, you ride bikes around uh, new orleans and we were the youngest 
people in this group. All the other people were like in their 70s and 80s. And they're whizzing by us like there's, I'm like, what the hell? Oh, like, yeah. This is crazy. And by the time we got off this bike, it was, I think it was three or four hour uh, deal. We could barely walk back to our hotel. <laughs> and we were so sore. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think I want to do that again. But Oh, man. Yeah. Our neighbors in New Orleans, they will outdo us partying like physically like just everything like people in new orleans they are um i think a lot of people think new orleans they think about you know people eating a lot and stuff like that but people in new orleans are very very active you know yeah. they don't just sit at home they don't just sit around at home <laughs> no I, and but it's it's a it was the first city i went to that i didn't have to rent a car hmm. you know, yep. I, I just got out of the airport got a, a, a uber to the hotel and uh, I walked everywhere and it was just, it was fantastic. Yeah. There's no place to park. We, we have to, <laughs> whenever I drive into the French quarter, I drive straight to the Omni and uh, that's where we have our valet. And I'm like, take my car. I don't want it. And uh, yeah, there's no, there's no driving in, in the French quarter. <laughs> so what do you, do you have any uh, horror stories that you want to share about um, any clients that you've dealt with? You don't have to name names, um, but you know, I, I, over the years, I've gotten my mm -hmm. pitas, you know, uh, pain in the ass clients. And, um, you know, I, I some there, there's just, it's either I want to charge them more or I just have to say no. <laughs> because it's just, yeah, I, I had one person came to me and they had a lot of money. And I was like, okay, if I take this, I'm selling my soul, uh, but it's good money. Um, and, and it was, it was very tempting. <laughs> and, and so we had this uh, call and she was ready to pay, but she was just absolute nightmare. And, and, and she wanted, well, we want to do weekly call-ins. And I'm like, that's not part of my deal. I'm not, I, no, I, I don't do that. And, and you have to be part of this it was either Asana or Trello or one of those time management track mm. things. And, I don't like doing that either. Already, already I'm like, no, this is no. a bad idea. No, no, this is no, and I had to turn her down, and 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 I, and like I said, it was it was it, a lot of money, and uh, and you know sometimes I kick myself, but then I realize it's like what it probably wouldn't have worked anyway. I would have fired her in ten minutes. Yeah, probably like the worst one, and I have. Um, Nick has done a really good job of helping me avoid those types of situations because um, both of my programs are on a wait list. So now I can really cherry pick who I, who I actually work with. Mm -hmm. But um, I had a, like, if you were talking about a horror story, um, probably happened about six months ago and it was a member of my $7 program. And she was posting all these wins like, Hey, this I launched this ad and this happened and I launched this ad and this happened like success story after success story. And then all of a sudden things turned turned a little negative in the group. And she was like, this strategy doesn't work and all of this stuff. And I'm like, this woman is crazy. Like I was like just a couple of like weeks ago, she couldn't stop posting that the strategy was the best she'd ever seen. And so um, even though I felt that there was something a little off, I, uh, I was like, I, I messaged her and I said, look, I said, I don't typically do this, but I'd like to offer you a power hour for free because in the group, she was like me, I'm about to go bankrupt and I'm about to like all of this stuff. Right. And when I, when I hear that, even though people are being a little weird, I always like want to help. Right. And my power hours are like 1500 bucks. Like if people want that, it's, you know, like it, that's how, that's how high they've gotten. They started at $97. Um, and so my students know how much they are. And I said, I'd want to offer this to you for free. And so I get on the call and I'm helping her out. And her husband is sitting there like on the side and he's like, um, well, where's the, wh could I pay for her to be in lean on Laurel? And I'm like, she was just saying that she's bankrupt, right? Like it doesn't. And, and he's like, Oh no, no, no. He's like, she helped me with my business. It's her business. That's bankrupt. And I'm like, okay, like, this is weird. 
Um, but no, you can't be in my program because that's just not good juju, right? And uh, so I literally sat with them for an hour and helped her reformulate her offer because it was a fitness offer. Mm -hmm. And well, it was like a fitness wellness offer. She was trying to do these deto this detox thing, but the price in her offer didn't make sense. And so I, I helped her rework her entire offer in a way that would make sense for her audience. And um, the next day, um, I see her post and she's like, Hey, anyone else in the wellness space want to hop on a zoom call and we'll all help each other. Right. Laurel helped me a great deal yesterday and blah, 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 blah. And so a whole bunch of people in the wellness space are like, sure. And so I didn't see anything other than that. And about a week later, I started getting pinged by some of my students and they were like, um, just so you know, I feel guilty about attending this call. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, it was a, it was like a, um, a bitch fest about Laurel call. It had nothing to do with helping anyone. She was literally just bad mouthing me. And keep in mind, this is after I gave her a free power hour. And it's like, and so now I'm like, I don't do free power hours anymore. I don't even do paid power hours because like, I just, you know, and, and I, I, I've been, people are just crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been noticing that in a lot of spaces lately, even, even some of my lawyers, I've been telling them stop doing free consultations charge, you know, even if it's 25 hours charge, because at least then they have skin in the game. They're paying for your time. And, and if they become a client, you can, ref you, you know, give that back but charge for your consultations. Yeah. And that's just, the, but that's, but if that's the worst thing that's happened to me, I'm doing pretty good. Right? <laughs> but that was just, it just kind of hurt my heart a little bit, you know, cause I was like, man, I just, you know, gave this woman my all, like, you know, didn't have to do that. And, but yeah, you people be people. Well, it's, it's, it's my philosophy that you're my friend first, my client second. And I think that you kind of share that same philosophy is, is that you will put your heart on your sleeve. You will help people. And, 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 you know, you, you, you're, it, the money is a secondary thing. Yes, we do charge enough or, or some people say too much, which I don't think is true, but you know, it, it's, it's, the money is there because we've helped a lot of people do what they need to do to increase their business. We should be paid for our knowledge and our experience, but you know, we can't do everything for free and we're not going to help everybody that's out there, but you know, yep. we, we are concerned yeah. though. Yeah. I still do a lot of free stuff, like, you know, off the cuff and stuff like that when I feel like it, but I think you have to kind of get to a certain point. Again, you have to get to the purpose right? Mm -hmm. Frequency, intensity, purpose. And so once you get to the purpose, you can kind of live in, in doing stuff like that, but I'm definitely more careful about who I spend, who I give my time to. Well, you know, that's <laughs> for anyone out there that really wants help that, that sees Laurel as an asset that can help them accelerate their business, please reach out. And, and how do they do that? Yeah. If they just want to like reach out to me, I am, um, uh, my, my, my social media choice is Instagram. So if you want, if you want to reach out to me and tell me, you know, you heard me on, you know, Rob's podcast, um, I'll, I'll make your message, a a priority. Um, but other than that, it, you know, if you want to get on the wait list for my $7 program, um, add coaching for seven.com and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, that's fantastic. I have nothing else. I have nothing else to sell you, as Alex Hermosi would say. <laughs> Other than my book, I guess, on Amazon. <laughs> get the book. Get the book. <laughs> or if you listen, book. if you go to my podcast, you can get the Audible for free because I leaked my entire book Audible on my podcast. Yeah, I saw that. And, and uh, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I have all these books and I've never done Audible. And people are like, well, Rob, why? I said, because I want you to read the damn book. I don't want you to listen <laughs> to it. I know. That's why I look like I, um, I don't know. I know a lot of people are listening, but like, that's why I made the book so big so that it didn't sit on a bookshelf that it actually got used because it's like a playbook, right? It's not, it's not meant to just, 
sit right. on a bookshelf and and be pretty. Right. And and so I I always ask people, did you read my book? Well, no. Well, then you're not an ideal client. I need you to no. read the book or books. You can't read. Um, I can't have you as a client. Just, that's it. That one important factor for me. You have yeah. to, to read. <laughs> well, you have to have you have to have a shared language, right? Mm -hmm. It it makes it hard whenever you know you have clients and they don't understand the shared language. And so, um, yeah, that's why like at the beginning of my program, I recommend, you know, but I made it free for those who maybe didn't have the money to go buy it on Amazon, but that's why I made the audible free on my podcast so that at least people have it, mm -hmm. um, because it does make a great guide to my, to my program. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, there's a lot of information there a lot of things that can help people. And, and so if you do want to, you know, uh, jump into the ad space, uh, on Facebook, Follow, follow Laurel's um, instructions because it does work. I, I have so many, we have so many mutual friends that give her so much praise that uh, you, you got to say, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, <she's laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, and, 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 you know, one of, one of my books is called Rob versus the scammers. And it's the, the whole Rob versus series is, is my sarcastic take on dealing with scammers, morons, lousy customer service. And, and uh, so people know that when I bring people onto the podcast, they're people that I, I can trust, you know, it's not no, no like trust, but it's also feel safe with. And so if I send somebody to you, I know that I'm going to feel safe that they're going to get the the right help and 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 for me it's it's not a question about you know well rob is she a competitor no because there's so much work in this world so much so much available out there i yeah. can't service it all and and you know back to my love-hate relationship with facebook i don't want to give I, I don't want to do that i'd rather give it to somebody who does it every single day <laughs> There you go. Yeah, there's no competition. I always tell people that. Like, I I collaborate with some of the best ad experts in the in the field for a reason. You know, there's you got to never stop learning. You can learn from anyone, anything. Yeah. And with that, I will bid everyone adieu, and and we'll see you guys on the next episode. And and make sure you go to Laurel's uh, website, which was Ad Coaching Ad. Yep. Ad Coaching for Seven dot com. There you go. So. Adios.